Folks, we need to talk about your pets, whether you're buying or selling a home. Some of you are gonna love this, some of you are gonna hate it, but if you're buying or selling, these are some helpful tips. There are some stats I'm gonna go through that I think will help illustrate the importance of managing your pet or preparing your house with pets in mind. Let's get into it. Let's start with the statistics first before we draw any conclusions. I think you're all gonna be surprised in this report. The National Association of Realtors created this report. I will link the entire report down in the description box below called Animal House, Pets in the Home Buying and Selling Process. All the slides that are on the screen are from this report. Once again, it will be linked in the description box below. Let's look at the first slide. 66% of U.S. households either own a pet or are planning to in the future. I love this next slide. Let's put it on the screen for you here willing to move for a pet. It says here that 43% of U.S. households would be willing to move for their pet or change their lifestyle to accommodate their pet. <laughs> I love that. So what do we learn from this slide? There are a lot of animal lovers out there. Got to be mindful of that. So we know a lot of the buyers out there have pets. What are they looking for? Well, let's put this on the screen for you. The number one thing they're looking for is a fenced yard. In fact, 49% of the buyers who have pets or potentially looking for a pet are looking for a fenced yard. Another 28% are looking for a house that's large enough for them and their pet. 24% of these buyers state that flooring's really important. They say that carpet's not necessarily what they're looking for when they have pets. And we know a lot of these buyers have pets. So, you know, that carpet, it will hold some of the odor. You know, dogs like doing their thing on softer surfaces. So some of these buyers are looking for hard surface flooring if they do, in fact, have a pet. So keep that in mind if you're doing some of those upgrades. For you homeowners out there that have pets, look at this like I do. I love this dog so much. I love her. I love her. I love her. What I can promise you is most buyers do not want to be bothered by your pet. Now, I look how cute she is. She's so cute. I would literally die for this dog. I love her so much. I know it's a total imbalance. But the point here is, is Olive is the pack leader. She can do no wrong ever. She gets Frito feet sometimes. You're a little sweetheart. But I don't notice it because my love is so intense for her. And I know that you sellers out there think the same of your animals. But I can tell you, when you're selling your house and those buyers come in, they don't want to be disrupted by the zoo that's in your house, okay? They want to come in. It should smell fresh. You should, if you can, try to clear every area of your house, if possible, of pets. Or just take them with you, you know? Put them in the car and take them for a walk. Stick those fish aquariums <laughs> in the back seat. I'm sort of joking. But you don't want the buyer to be distracted with your pets. I promise you, they do not love your pet as much as you do. And I'm telling myself the same thing. I've had a lot of you reach out to me and say, Audra, I can't move my pets off the property. I mean, literally, I can't move my macaw bird. And I have multiple fish aquariums. And I have reptiles. And I have some cats that I can't even catch. I, I can't rid my property of the animal kingdom that resides there. So I'm going to say, hey, you can only do what you can do. But typically, you can close off some of the area of your garage or some storage area to put some pets temporary. This is not a long-term living situation. This is a very short period of time. Those cats that are roaming around the house, you know, the problem with cats is they're skittish. And honestly, most of the time, the cats just hide under the bed and they don't really like visitors anyway. But, you know, those iguanas and those turtles and those reptile tanks, I can't tell you how many kids and they're all trying to find where the little turtle is or where the lizard is. And they're not focused on looking at the property. And not even that. Some of those aquariums smell swampy and nasty. Like, I don't know what it is. It's like a Petri dish for bacteria. <laughs> I hate it. So if you do have those reptile tanks and fish aquarium tanks, we're going to make sure they don't smell nasty. And preferably, can we move them to a garage or maybe put them into one room so it's only one room that's impacted by this viewing thing. Maybe we can do that. Those of you who have big birds or parrots or parakeets or canaries or finches, you know those things make a lot of noise and they are messier than my teenage son. Like within five minutes of cleaning their cage, it's like destruction zone, okay? My mom and brother raised a bunch of birds when I was younger and I had to, you know, pitch in and help clean the cages. So when you have buyers that are coming into your property, you know, it's going to be loud more than likely if you can put them in an area where they're not as distracting or at a minimum, try to clean that cage because you don't want a buyer to come in and say, wow, this is kind of messy. And by the way, those birds do stink just as bad as those aquariums. Okay. We love our animals, but they usually do have kind of a scent and odor to them. Okay. Our buyers, most of them 
have pets and love pets, but what they don't love is your pets and the damage that they have made on your property. So if you have those kitties, like look around, they, you probably have shredded draperies, or maybe they, you know, start a claw in the back of the couch, right? Or maybe they have fur balls or whatever. We got to remove all that stuff. So let's say, you know, the couch, They're like, oh, water, don't worry about it. They're not buying the couch anyway. True, but there is a perception that the house hasn't been well cared for and what other things have the kitties destroyed. So, you know, don't go out and buy a whole new couch. Just put a blanket over it, right? Just hide it is all I'm saying. I'm not saying spend a lot of money here. I'm just saying like, come on, let's just put a little effort into it, right? If your draperies are all thrashed, right? Just take them down. I'm all about, you know, opening up the light making things open, you know, less is more. And if you have a dog, more than likely they're chewing on the baseboards, right? So you're going to want to patch that up as well. Like just go around the house, take the love goggles off and see your house for what it is. I had a, one owner have this lovely little dog and it was getting older and it had a hard time with balance. So it would lean against the walls. So all around the house, there was a line across the walls down low because the dog's, you know, oils and fur would stain it a little bit. The owner never saw it. <laughs> so look around for things like that. So for those of you who have dogs, cats, kids, teenage boys, I promise you there are accidents on your property that you're probably unaware of. So I recommend that you buy one of these little guys. It's a black flashlight. I bought mine on Amazon. It's reasonable. And you shine it on the floor. And anything that has any urination will bright up for those boys. Look around the toilets. Like sometimes, you know, we all know what boys do. <laughs> But my point in that is that when we live in our house, we don't realize what kind of smells are in our house. And urine is not a great smell. So highly recommend that you get that. And if there are areas that are compromised, try to minimize it. Well, let's talk about smells and odors in a property. I did a video a few weeks back and I got a lot of hate on the smell stuff. OK, so I'm going to do a quick summary. In that video, I said, hey, here's a candle. It's going viral. I still love the smell of this candle. It's on Amazon. I think it's 20 some odd dollars. I actually put this candle on a property that I was listing for sale. The homeowner called me and said, Otter, this candle smells like you know, a brothel. <laughs> My family is completely offended. Like, get it off the property. And the reason why I bring that up is because candles and the scent of fragrance in a home can be overwhelming. So if you do want to put some fragrance Make sure it's smelling very fresh and neutral. Another really popular candle is this candle from Diptyque. It is delicious. However, it is a very specific scent, okay? People either love it or hate it. So if you are trying to create a very welcoming environment, you don't want to do things that are very strong smelling, and you don't want to have the buyers feel like you're trying to mask something. Now, when we have animals, we oftentimes like to overdo it on these guys. Don't do it less is more. We want our house to smell fresh and clean. So I highly suggest that you do a very, very, very deep cleaning. And of course, I do not suggest that you overdo it with the scent. I use this. It's a Vanilla Bean Noel by Bath and Body Works. I buy it in mass at the end of the year. What I like about it is it's it's just really, it's it's soft, right? Now, the purpose of me spraying this in the air isn't to mask odors. It's just to give when somebody walks in to view the home, like a great feeling, right? The smell is a very powerful sense. And we want to, in my opinion, maximize the experience when our viewers are at the home. But please hear me. We do not want to overkill the scent. And we also don't want to mask any, any odors. We want to just, you know, it's one additional step to have a good experience when somebody is coming to view your home. Now, I had a lot of you reach out after that video when I talked about the scents and we're like, no way, Audra. I don't like those scents. Da, da, da. I have allergies and I can't walk into a house that has all that fragrance. I'm just going to turn around and walk out. I hear you. And, and by the way, there's no one that has worse allergies than me. Like it's this huge struggle for me. I'm already like two allergy pills in and it's only 10 o'clock right now. <laughs> but my point is, is that we just talked about how many homeowners have pets. I would say the majority of us that struggle with allergies struggle with pet dandruff, right? So if you are walking into a home, I can assure you that you would prefer to have a house that is odor free, dander free, and that when you walk in, it feels very clean and crisp. OK, 
You can do that by putting lemons down the garbage disposal or lavender is a really nice scent. We don't overkill the scent. We just make sure that the house smells fresh and clean. And by the way, it should be fresh and clean. All right, to back up what I just said, 78% of the buyers out there are telling you, hey, we want your pets off the property. 72% says, hey, we want the animal damage to be remedied or fixed. We don't want to deal with your pet issues, right? And 70% says, hey, we want you to clean your home and remove all animal scent, okay? These are the stats, people. <laughs> so whether your buyer's telling you or not, that's what, what we're seeing here. For you sellers out there, you also wanna remove all evidence of pets, those pet beds, right? They're toys. Now, this is all of my dog's favorite toy. This thing is so nasty and it smells gross, but I do not have the heart to throw it away because she loves this thing so much. And I know there are things that your pets have that probably smell that are their toys, whatever. All I'm saying is when we take pictures or if we're showing the property, we need to remove that, okay? Find a box, find a basket, stick it in the basket, right? We want to make sure that the house is completely, and I mean 1,000% clear of all animal remnants. So if those of you who have cat litters, we're going to try to put those cat litters somewhere. I mean, even in the garage, just so we minimize that when we have visitors, or those dog bags, those dog toys. And for those of you who have kids, same thing. Like we're gonna try to get all of that off the property. Once again, although we have buyers that love dogs and probably kids too, they don't love to see your dog stuff or your kid stuff. So we're gonna try to declutter, buy boxes, baskets, make sure it's out of sight. All right, quick break. Please subscribe to my channel. I'm at 40,000 subscribers. I'm thrilled. Thank you so much for your support. As you know, I'm trying to get to 50,000 subscribers, just trying to get the message out. Let's get back into it. I had an incident with a very difficult client <laughs> where they had their two pit bulls like closed up in this back area of their garage. And as soon as you walked into the garage, which in my opinion was borderline cruelty to animals, but nonetheless, you walk into the garage and I'm not kidding you guys, I have never smelled anything worse in my life. Like you just walk in the garage, it smelled horrible, not good for resale. And the irony in this whole thing is the other part of the house was completely immaculate. But as soon as you got to that garage, that smell and odor was overwhelming. So I talked to the homeowner. I'm like, can we please get the dogs off the property during the open house? She's like, no, I'll just have my neighbor come over and let the dogs out before so they can do their business. And then she'll put them back in their holding box, their holding cell, <laughs> and everything's going to be fine. I'm like, oh, okay. So what happened is the neighbor came over. I had the open house, all the doors all open. I'm in the middle of the open house. The neighbor comes in, lets the pit bulls out. The pit bulls run through the house, run out the front door because the neighbor thought, oh, I didn't know this was, all the doors were open. I'm like, lady, it's an open house. What do you think? And so now we have pit bulls running all over the neighborhood. Okay, I share that with you because understand that us realtors out there, when we're showing your home, our primary responsibility is selling your home, but realize you are limiting our ability to sell your house when those animals are there or interfering in the sales process. I know that's tough. For you buyers out there, listen up. It is very disrespectful for you to walk into somebody's house with your pet, unless of course you got permission. So that's the point. If you have to have your animal with you, whether it be a comfort dog or like I had this one lady walk in because her dog was dying and she just needed it close to her in case something would happen and she really wanted to see the house. So needless to say, we got permission ahead of time. But some of you just walk in like, oh, this is my dog. Don't worry about it. And it's lip in the leg. But what you have to realize, a lot of these homeowners do in fact suffer with allergies. Just a little bit of dandruff from your cat or dog or bird or whatever. It creates some health issues for them. So if you want to bring your pet to an open house or a showing, please ask permission before you enter the property. In my opinion, the best rule of thumb is just don't bring your pet. Just don't bring it. And for those of you who need those comfort animals, or if you really do want to bring your pet in, then I would suggest that you kind of schedule a private showing and get permission before walking in. All these homeowners have cameras. You're not fooling anybody. And it puts a great deal of stress for us because you don't know what your pet's going to do when they're in a different situation. If you have your dog and someone goes out to pet it during the open house, it bites them, we have a problem, right? Like we just don't want to have that. It's respectful. It's the right thing to do. Either ask permission or just don't bring your pets or your kids. <laughs> so mean. What I love about this report is I love hearing there are so many people who love their animals or one another animal or a pet, right? 
So if you are a seller, you need to keep that in mind. If you have a backyard that has a broken fence, maybe we repair it because we know a lot of these buyers, 66% of them, are either going to buy a pet in the near future or currently have one. We also know that even though these buyers love animals, they aren't in love with some of the damage and the dirt and the odor that your animal has created. So we wanna be really mindful of making sure we clear the entire property of any animal remnants and odors. We also know it's important to thoroughly clean our house, whether you have a pet or not. And after looking at this report, it really kind of inspired me to look at things a little differently. I was pretty overwhelmed with how many people own a pet or want one. So it might be a good idea if you live in an area that has great veterinarian services, maybe you put that in your feature sheet or maybe you highlight there's dog parks or walking trails for dogs, right? Or cats or, hey, here's all the stores in our area that have pet supplies. Like it really is a lot bigger of a deal than I realized. So if you are in those areas that have really good pet services, like in my area, I live in San Juan Capistrano, California. We have a lot of equestrian presence. So, you know, in my listings, maybe I put down, hey, these are the local equestrian hospitals. Here are some of the local horse tax shops. In fact, in my community, we actually have a community dog park, which I've never highlighted in any of my listings. So it's a good strategy to focus on who your buyer is. And I think we can all assume that most of the buyers who are going to be buying your house are looking at your house with their pet in mind. This video makes me happy. I'm just super thrilled to hear there are so many animal lovers out there. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Audra Lambert. I reside in Orange County, California, and I am one of the top producers in my area. If you're looking to buy or sell in this area, please reach out to me. I'm for hire. And if you got any benefit out of this video, please subscribe to this channel and I'll see you in the next one.